Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing day three of the Donald Trump trial. The last video I did covered day one, and today we've got some different body language, so I thought we would cover a little bit of day three. First, we're going to watch him in court, and then we're going to watch him after court. A couple of quick things before we get started. I wanted to make sure that you know that despite the fact that this is about a politician, it is not meant to be political. The goal of this video is to be as objective as possible. In addition to that, I wanted to let you know that I have a lot of new true crime content coming soon. Last thing before we get started is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with Trump while he's actually in court. So you'll notice in his brow, there's a look of concentration. He's trying to take this seriously. He doesn't show much of a facial expression. I talked about this a little bit last time that when he's in court, he tends to be a little bit more blank. You also saw him sitting up there a little bit. He's trying to keep a posture that's one of authority. He wants to be sitting upright. He's got his arms leaning on the table. This is a position we've seen him sit in before. So look at the difference in posture from Donald Trump right now relative to the attorney on his right. The attorney on his right is sitting back a little bit more of a casual stance, so probably a little bit calmer. Donald Trump is a lot more intense. He's taking up a little bit more room. His body is in a posture that's a bit more authoritative than the attorney's. You. You'll notice the judge didn't have the same smile that he had on day one. He may have learned people's reaction to that wasn't so positive. And you'll notice that Trump is doing what we call steepling right here. So he's got his fingers together. Oftentimes, people do this that are in a position of authority. People do this also to be more believable as an expert. What we've seen, real research shows that being an expert witness in court, if you do this while you're talking, you are more believable. It is an actual symbol of authority for people that have authority. If you don't have authority and you do it, you're just going to come across as annoying. So if he were to do this hand sign while testifying, if there was a jury involved, he would be more believable and be considered more of an actual authority if he was doing that with his hands, as weird as that sounds. So what we're going to look at now is Donald Trump after his day in court. Page after page, document after document, and the bottom line... So now one thing we're already noticing is that if you watch my video on his first day in court, when he came out afterwards, he was seething. He looked quite angry and he wasn't using his normal body language. This with his hands up, talking with his hands is very much his normal body language. So I think that he's probably getting more comfortable and more in the flow of this trial and maybe feel somewhat less intense on day three. This is this rigged? Because the judge knows whatever he's going to do. He said that mar -a was worth $18 million. Now, if you watch right here, you'll notice he tucked his chin in when he said Mar-a-Lago was worth. We do that when we're trying to reduce our vulnerability because this is a very vulnerable spot. Somebody hits you right here, it's going to knock you out. So inherently, we know that when we're feeling vulnerable, we want to move our neck back. We want to tuck it in. So you see him doing this. It's very subtle, but he does this a couple of times when he's talking. Watch this right here. He said that Mar-a-Lago was worth eight. See, he said that Mar-a-Lago was worth $18 million or something like that. So when he talks about this, he's feeling defensive when he's discussing it. Not surprisingly, I don't think that he would deny that either, but we're seeing that in his body language. $18 million, and it's worth $1.5 billion or thereabouts. But he said it was worth $18 billion. So they defrauded us because he called me a fraud. All right, so you'll notice also that very subtly he's puffing his chest out a little bit when he's talking about this. This is a way to show superiority, to show, look, you know, don't mess with me. It's a way to take up more room because that's part of what he's doing with his hands as well. Now, sometimes he's just using his hands for emphasis. And if you see sort of how far they expand, oftentimes that shows the degree that he's emphasizing. He really is pretty proportional when he does that. But right now, his hands are spread out quite far. And what that does, that takes up more room. That leads to you feeling more dominant. That makes you appear more dominant. So the goal here is to be dominant. It is to take up as much space as possible and to puff his chest out when he's talking about these things because he thinks these are things that are very significant, very important. And you can't do that. It's worth probably 50 to 100 times more than that. See the posture? He's 
propping up 50 to 100 times more than that. It's so important to him, and it makes him feel important to talk about it because he's saying the value is actually this big. So he's trying to show you with his body how much bigger it is than is it, than the way it was represented in court. Let's watch that again. It's worth probably 50 to 100 times more than that. You can see he's sort of leaning back and puffing his chest out. Yet no, she had practically nothing in terms of vote. But she went after Trump because she was running for governor. That's the only reason. But she got the judge. Let's see. Somebody starts talking. He pointed. Now, something I've talked about before is that we inherently don't like getting pointed at. It feels hostile. If somebody comes and points in your face, almost universally, that does not feel good. That's just the way that we're wired. So when somebody starts talking, somebody who's yelling out to him, he pointed his finger at them. That's his way of saying, I'm going to dominate right now. Watch this again. For governor, that's the only reason. But she got the judge to value. And it works, too. The person stopped talking. Mar-a-Lago for 18 million dollars when the smallest house in Palm Beach is probably worth 50 million dollars and this is the biggest the best anywhere in the country so he's raising his eyebrows right then he hasn't done that so far as he's been talking and what he really wants you to focus on this moment because that's what we're trying to do is draw attention to what we're saying draw attention to our face and he's saying that this is a very valuable piece of property he really wants you to hear this watch this part again this is the biggest, the best anywhere in the country. There's nothing like it. So they put it down at 18 million, and they said I, I overvalued it because we had it valued at a much lower number than it's worth. And by the way, now he's got the finger out, which is almost universally a sign of aggression and hostility. So we know he's going to say something that makes him angry. My financial documents are valued much less than my actual value. So body language is very tied to how we feel. And the more intense we feel, the more we have body language. So that's why you see people with ADHD, for example. They tend to have a lot of body language because they tend to feel more intensely than most people. So for Donald Trump right here, as he lifts his hand up to talk about value, he's, lift, he's putting his hand up high so that you'll feel just how much it's worth. So that you'll see he's using his body language to physically represent high value, high assets, all of that stuff. Watch this again in context. My financial documents are valued much less than my actual value. So my actual value is this high. He wants you to physically feel that. And this is effective. When people use their body in this way, it can be compelling. Which nobody even knows. But the financial documents that I gave to the bank are much less than my actual net worth. See, so when you see him using his hands at the bottom to say much less than my actual net worth, that movement is going to be compelling to people when they see it because he, his emotions are so tied to it. So it makes things like that more believable for people. As you saw today, with the kind of cash I have and the kind of success we've had, but I'm a private company. I was never going to reveal this kind of stuff, but now it comes out. So he said, I'm a private company. Look how broad his hands get when he says this, and I'll explain. As you saw today, with the kind of cash I have and the kind of success we've had, but I'm a private company. So he's really opening his arms up wide, basically saying, look how vulnerable I am. You are now seeing things that I didn't expect people to see because I'm a private company and I shouldn't have to release this information or whatever it is. But it, and is, what he's really showing right here by spreading his arms this big, sometimes it's to take up space. But I think in this one, it's to show, hey, I'm being vulnerable or I feel vulnerable here by, by having to go through this. But I was never going to reveal this kind of stuff, but now it comes out. It comes out because a corrupt attorney general sued me for fraud. And then they found out they had no case. And they have no case. And if you read the New York Law Journal, they basically say they have no case against Trump. See, now you'll notice his body leaned in as he's getting frustrated, as he sounds a little bit more aggressive. They have no case against Trump. So as his body leans in, that emotionally connects us more to other people. So if someone leans back, that's a way to distance ourselves. He's talking about something he feels very passionate about. So he's leaning into that. Watch his body movement right here. Blood journal, they basically say they have no case against Trump. See that? He leans forward. It's subtle, but he does do that. But I'm here, stuck here, and I can't come back. I'd rather be right now in Iowa. I'd rather be in New Hampshire or South Carolina or Ohio or a lot of other places. Now, you see, his voice tends to go up into a higher register when he's talking about something that he doesn't want to sound aggressive about. Like, hey, I'd rather be at these other places. 
It's a friendlier tone, and it's one that's less threatening. So when he's talking about wanting to be at these places, that's when he changes the way he speaks. Busy, because I'm leading Biden in the polls by a lot. That's all this is. This is a See, somebody started talking. He points his finger, and effectively he shuts them down. Listen. Election interference. Then he puts his hand out further to say stop. And it's effective. The way that he does this, and he's very consistent with this, it does actually seem to shut people down. This is the second time he's done it, and people do actually stop talking. He's controlled, and it's a shame. What's going on here is a shame. Our whole system is corrupt. This is corrupt. See, now his body language changed a little bit. He was using both hands. Now he's talking with one hand. Watch this, and I'll explain why. Here's a shame. Our whole system is corrupt. So this is a point that he wants to make so strongly he's changed his body language. Our whole system is corrupt. People oftentimes do this. They punctuate with their body language when there's a point they want to really make strongly. One, the, when, if you want to focus on the things that he really wants you to hear, watch when his eyebrows go up. Watch when he does things like this. This is corrupt. Atlanta is corrupt. And what's coming out of D.C. is corrupt. And he also wants you to visualize that. So he points his finger out. Atlanta is corrupt. Moves his finger over so that you can visualize and so you can connect with what he's saying. Because it's interesting. If you think about it like this and why I keep talking about how and why he emphasizes things. If you imagine that he was standing behind a podium and just saying this very plainly and very calmly, I don't think people will remember what he's saying. But you get through all of this, you're going to remember a lot of the different points that he made because of how he's using his emphasis and his body language. It's actually a very effective way to get people to remember your, what you're saying. And others have done a good job. They say there's no case here, but we have a corrupt attorney general that tried to make a case. Thank you very much. So hopefully going over this is helping you better understand Trump's body language and how he uses his body language to communicate his points and how he makes certain aspects of what he says memorable for people that watch him speak. If you want to see more of this, I really don't know how many more days this case is going to go on. I'm happy to cover it if you feel like you're learning something or if you feel like there's more you want to hear about Trump and his body language. In addition to that, if there's other cases you want me to cover, please let me know. I have a lot of new, interesting, and different true crime stuff coming soon. Last thing before we get finished up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right. Thanks for watching.